I have a flower sack towel here and there is a right and a wrong side and you can tell by looking at how they've done the hem on this one you can tell there's actually a store tag on it so that's the wrong side and the right side is there I'm going to turn it so that the right side is inside and so that it is laid out in half all the way up. None of the rest of this out here really matters except that you want it even. And then I'm going to give it just a tad of starch right there so that when I hit it with my iron it will stay. But while I'm waiting for my iron to heat up, I'm going to fold my towel in thirds. And the reason I'm folding it in thirds is because I want my design on the bottom third of the towel. And I'm only really putting starch over here at the side where the center of the towel is. But I am going to iron it all the way down. My iron's not completely hot yet, so... It's not doing a good job. <laughs> so we'll flip that top portion up. And for me, the top is going to be the edge that I cut. I am leaving the commercially made hem on here. And this bottom third I am going to iron all the way out to the edge. You could do this with a friction pen also. I just kind of like how it looks with the iron and then I don't have to play with the friction pen. So when you open this up you should still have your crease at the bottom third and your crease at the center. So they are right there. Now when I center this I want my embroidery design to be centered right here where that mark is. So I am going to put a pen right there. And that pen is just for you guys to be able to see in case the mark isn't showing for you where I ironed it. So there's the center of where I want our embroidery to be. Now we're going to move that aside just long enough us to bring in this is a dime snap hoop mine is a six by ten and it is made specifically for my baby lock flourish this is the piece that keeps the two parts of the dime snap hoop separated make sure there's no crid under there and I am going to put my piece of this is my stabilizer that I used on my last project and I'm just going to reuse it. It's paper stabilizer. It will tear away after I get this all done. Okay. And then we're going to put our towel on here. Now, once again, here is my cross. That's where I want the center of mine to be. And the reason I ironed it up and out to the sides is because there is a ruler on my snap hoop. Zero here, zero here, zero, and zero. That's how you know you're going to, you're, you can center this. I'm going to lay the snap hoop on there. And then what I want to do is I want my lines that I ironed on here to be lined up with those zero marks. And I'm not worried that the uh, fabric doesn't go all the way to the bottom here, but I do want to make sure that it's taut and that it's lined up, like I said, with the zeros. This is going to be a kitchen towel. It's going to be kind of roughly when it's folded up, but I don't care. I still want it to be the way I want. And because this is fairly sheer, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay 
a little piece of butter saw stabilizer over the top of this. I am not putting any applique on this towel. So I, you know, want to make sure that I've got my stitching as protected as I can protect it. Now I am going to do one other thing here. And all I'm doing with the little, and I'm, I switched. So what I'm doing is I'm using a little clip right here just to keep the fabric where I want it. And then here, I'm going to roll it over. And this is just me. This is not a necessity. But I'm going to roll it over and I'm going to pin the fabric the extra fabric on the outside to the stabilizer that's outside the hoop just so that it doesn't get in my way while I'm trying to stitch. Um, but this is just how I like to do it. So now we're going to go over to the embroidery machine and I'm going to show you how I do the embroidery on this. So now we've loaded our embroidery file and we've put our hoop in. If you ever have issues putting your hoop into your machine, stop and look and see what the problem is because it's always you. It's never the machine. <laughs> and I'm worried about that piece getting... somewhere so I want to make sure that I move it so it's over the arm and out of the way all right so now we've chosen this and I have put it in I'm gonna click edit end and then what I want to see is I want to see where this file is going to actually stitch at so this button here this button right here tells the machine that I want to see that. And I think that is awfully big. So let's go back and let's go back to size. And I have to look to see what 142 millimeters by 158 millimeters is. And I want to make this smaller. Once again, I want to see where it's going to stitch at. Okay. So now I'm going to tell it, okay, I'm going to click on embroidery. And then right here, we're going to drop our presser foot so that this button turns green. And I've already checked the threads in my machine. It's a green variegated, and I like it, so I'm going to use it. And I'm going to click start. And I'm going to click start. And now that it's done a few stitches, I'm going to click stop because what I want to get is that little beginning thread off of there. And now we're going to start again. We're just doing my work first.
my machine is going to stop and give me an opportunity to change my thread, which I'm going to do right now. So, gauging the thread on the flourish is pretty easy. I'm going to take off the spool that I just finished with, and I'm going to set it aside.
I think it came out really great. What do you think?